Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Summer. To, oh, I'm here to talk about the lesson mole to mole conversions. In this lesson, we'll be able to convert from moles of one substance to moles of another substance using a balanced chemical equation. If you remember that a balanced chemical equations, we balance the chemical equations to represent the law of conservation of matter. So remember, matter cannot be created nor destroyed, only rearranged. So to balance the chemical equations, we can change the coefficients to ensure that there are the same number of atoms on each side of the equation. So what is stoichiometry? Stoichiometry is, the is using conversion factors to answer a question. So in chemistry, we use, them as the, um, use it as the relationship between the amounts of substances in a chemical reaction. So you have used these types of calculations all the time in your daily life and you just don't know it. So the scenario. RRHS is having a bake sale to raise money for new lab equipment. Mrs. Summer is asked to bake some of her custom sugar cookies. So yeah, my, I am being asked to make some of my yummy cookies. So given the ingredients that I have left, that I has, let's see how many batches I can make to donate. So here is my recipe. And yes, this is the actual recipe I used to make these cookies. Recipe is two cups white granulated sugar, one teaspoon vanilla, three fourths cup whole milk, four eggs, four, and six cups of white flour. So I have a ton of sugar, vanilla, milk, and flour, but only have six eggs. So how many batches can I make? So step one I need to solve is I need to write my balanced equation. Then I need to use, set up my work and following my units, identify my useful conversions, I need to do the math, and then write my answer with the correct um, units. This, how, how, writing a balanced equation. So I'm gonna use abbreviate each ingredient so it looks like a chemical equation. So I have two cups of sugar, one cup of vanilla, or one teaspoon of vanilla, four eggs, 0 0.75 whole milk, which is the exact same thing as three-fourths cup whole milk, and six cups flour equals one batch of cookies. So step two is I need to set up my work to follow my units. So we're going to try to go from the number of eggs to how many batches I can make. So using our balanced equation, we can make a ratio. So I have six eggs equals how many batches over four eggs. So this is my conversion factor that I'm going to need to just figure out what that is in order to solve the problem. So finding my useful conversion. So using the balanced equation, we can set up the ratio of how many eggs to how many batches we can use in one reaction. So in chemistry, we call a mole to mole ratio. So a mole to mole ratio is just a conversion factor. It allows us to get from what we know to what we want. So given the balanced equation, how many eggs, are, which are our reactants, do we need to make the cookies or my product? So in each batch, there are four eggs for one batch or one batch for four eggs. So now we need to do the math. So I have four eggs, and these are my conversion factors. And then I started with six eggs. That's all I had in my refrigerator. So I have six eggs. And then, so I want my eggs to cancel so, and I just want my batches left over. So my egg is going to be on the bottom. My, the egg portion of my conversion factor is on the bottom here. And my batch is on top. So 6 times 1 divided by 4 equals 1 and a half batches. This is stoichiometry. At its heart, this is exactly what stoichiometry is. Just because we're switching to chemical equations and, um, and, like, different elements and different masses and different units doesn't mean we're going to do anything different than what we did with the cookies. So if you remember the things called coefficients, so remember in a balanced equation, the number in front is the coefficient. When balancing equations, we said the coefficients shows us the number of molecules needed for that reaction, which is true. Which, however, we can't just have three O2 molecules in one container because they're just too small. So instead, the coefficient really means the number of moles. So moles of that molecule. So in this reaction, there are three moles of O2, four moles of iron, two moles of iron oxide. So used in this reaction. So mole to mole ratios, just like the cookie example where we made a mole to mole ratio with four eggs to one batch or one batch to four eggs, we can make a mole to mole ratio using the amounts in moles of any two compounds involved in a chemical reaction. So for example, in this equation, and sorry, transferred over in weird, but we have three moles of O2 for every four moles of iron, or we could write it as three moles of O2 
for two moles of iron oxide. You can make any combination you need to answer the problem. So try making this mole to mole ratio. So here's the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. And then write the mole to mole ratio for H2O to H2. So if we were to do that, we have, we can write two mole H2 over two mole H2O or two mole, that's not H2O, two mole H2O over two mole H2. The mole to mole ratios is how we convert between one substance and another in a chemical reaction. It's the conversion factor. You can only go from moles of one substance to moles of another. You can't go directly from grams of one substance to grams of another without first using your mole ratio. So this is a conversion factor, um, a map that you can use. In um, There are copies in either Google Classroom and in the Google website to fill in if this will help you understand the different um, relationships between all of our, the different conversions we are going to be doing this unit. Remember, the steps to solving a stoic problem is you write your balanced equation, you set up your work to follow and following the units, so you're setting up your work with those railroad tracks, identify your useful conversions, and then do the math and write your answer with the correct number of units. So in this question it says, how many moles of oxygen are produced when the decomposition of six moles of potassium chlorate? So in this, we're going to write down what we started with. So we started with six mole of KClO3. Now the ratio that we need, we're going to be between oxygen and potassium chlorate. So we have three moles O2 to every two mole KClO3. So because we started with our moles KClO3, we're going to put, oops, that's supposed to be a two, two moles KClO3 on the bottom and three moles O2 on the top because it says how many moles of O2. That's the question we need to answer. So this is the unit and um, substance we want on in our final answer. These will an end up canceling. So we have six times three, which is 18, then divided by two is nine mole O2 Oops. as our answer. You try. How many moles of iron will be needed to make eight moles of iron two oxide? Okay. In order to solve this, so how many moles of iron here are needed to make eight moles of iron two oxide? So what we're starting with is eight moles Fe2O3. And what we want to find is the moles of Fe. So what's our ratio? We have four moles of Fe to two moles of Fe2O3. So our relationship is four mole Fe to two mole Fe2O3. So because we are, are we're starting with moles of Fe2O3, on the bottom here, I'm going to write 2 mole Fe2O3, and I'm getting that from our conversion factor. Then, on the top, I have 4 mole Fe. So these moles of Fe2O3 cancel. So we have 8 times 4, which is 32, divided by 2 is 16 moles Fe as our answer.